It's been a year since I got my Rolex Submariner, so I thought I'll make an update. In the past year, it was one of my most worn watches, both on and off work. I never bought it to be a safe queen, nor did I have any intention of flipping it, despite being able to make quite a profit at the time. I bought it for myself as a reward for passing 100,000 subscribers. And since I waited a little over a year to get it, it was delivered just a couple of months after my son was born. That cemented its place in my collection, as it meant he will inherit it one day as his birth year watch. Despite that, at first having it all nice and shiny, I was very aware of it on my wrist, trying to avoid scratches as much as possible. That phase lasted barely two weeks, until I banged it against a steel beam at work to stop myself from falling. It didn't damage the watch, but it did put a tiny scratch on the clasp. That officially made it used, and no longer mint, so I started wearing it the same way as my all other watches, simply enjoying it. When I see how my Zelos hammerhead looked after a year of wear, I can say this thing held up pretty well. There are no dings or gouges on it, only hairline scratches that are mostly found on the bracelet and clasp and a couple on the highly polished sides. That's it, the top surfaces of the watch itself as well as the crystal and bezel still look as perfect as they were when it was new. The wearing experience, from a technical point, was a joy. The watch is incredibly comfortable, although slightly heavy, perfectly sized and everything on it works flawlessly. I am the first guy to always go for underdogs and trying to justify their flaws because of how great they are in other areas. And it was refreshing to go for a mainstream top dog where everything is pretty much perfect. The crown engagement and feel, the bezel action and alignment, the glide lock that made it the only watch on bracelet I didn't have to resize when I lost one third of my weight. Everything met my expectations, while accuracy exceeded them. The watch is averaging plus 2 seconds over a week, but later I figured out if I leave it on its side overnight every other night, I can keep it pretty much spot on and it will be in sync with an atomic clock almost indefinitely, which quite frankly is amazing. I found a thread on TRF forum about these new 32 generation movements developing low amplitude problems that affect accuracy, but so far mine has been problem free. As for the wearing experience from a more personal and emotional point of view, it too has been more than satisfying. If you expect wearing a Rolex will make women want you and men wanting to be you, or have people you do business with take you more seriously, forget it. Literally no one notices it on my wrist. It draws less attention than some of my G-Shocks, which in my case at least is a good thing. What it does affect is how I feel. Whether I want to admit it or not, it does make me feel more confident when I wear it. It was a dream I worked for come true, and that gives me that I made it kind of attitude, even though in this world and this time, you never really make it. You're always a couple of bad decisions or a couple of worldwide events away from total ruin. After a year with this, I can say I have no regrets and it will most definitely remain one of my most worn watches, as it simply works in every situation. It becomes clear why it is as popular as it is. If you're in the market for one, get one. You can look into alternatives, but trust me, they will satisfy your desires for a brief time and you'll end up wanting this again. I know this as I tried it all, from micro brands and homages to going for its competition, including an Omega Planet Ocean. All of those were great watches in their own regard, but a sub is a sub, and if you want one, nothing else will do. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe, and until the next video, bye.